Super Mario Odyssey is a game that I don't think needs any introduction. It's simply a masterpiece. The game is, was released on October 27, 2017. For those of you who don't know when this game was released. Though at the time of this video, it is kind of recent. And oh my god do I love this game. So, I thought I'd make a bit of a review video and basically cover why- basically do a full on review of this game. And yeah, do that. So, basically this video will be a little bit different since this is my first review video. Um, this video will basically be split up- um, the review will be split up into a couple sections. And the first section right now is story. Ultimately, the story for the game isn't the best it could have been. Basically, in this game, the main story is that Bowser kidnapped Peach again. I mean, well, what do you freaking do? Though this time, he actually plans to marry Peach instead. And basically takes her around the entire globe just for a wedding. And Mario must stop it. Cappy. Well, wait. Cappy right here has actually joined, joined Mario because he wants to save his own sister, Tiara, who's basically been put on Princess Peach's head. They, and so basically, they have to go around the entire globe as well. But in order to do this, they must go to. They must use a ship over there known as the Odyssey. Basically, in order to power the Odyssey, however, they must have to collect power moons in a certain kingdom, whatever. Whatever, they're in the Cap Kingdom, they're in the Cascade Kingdom, they're in the Metro Kingdom, whatever. Basically, Mario and Cappy will travel around the entire globe and then reach the moon to basically rescue Peach. I will fully admit, I kind of wish the story was better. I mean, I'm not expecting anything too deep in a Mario game, considering, well, it's, I mean, it's Mario, so, well, no. Basically, the thing is, I kind of wish it was better. Maybe, maybe they'll happen to Super Mario Odyssey 2. Oh, wow, it's a lot of those. Anywho, um... I don't know. It would have been... I feel like they really should have done something a little bit different, considering how big this game is. I feel like they could have done so much more. And I would have been fine with Princess Peach getting kidnapped, as long as the story got a little bit deeper. Or there was, like, some kind of plot twist. Unfortunately, there wasn't. The thing is, though, that saddens me the most is that I feel like they should have actually revealed the whole wedding idea, if, like, right before the Robobrew battle. I feel like that would have been a really cool idea because I feel like at first we should have been like, oh, Princess Peach is getting kidnapped. Well, damn. But then at, like, the near the very end of the game, right before you fight the Boodles the last time, you actually, uh, Bowser finally announces he's actually going to be, um... Marrying Peach. I feel like that would have been such an interesting plot to it, like a, 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 an interesting plot idea. But they really didn't do that. But anywho, the story, it's alright. Not the best for a Mario game, but it's alright. Gameplay. Ultimately, the gameplay in this game is just amazing. Basically, in this game, you can basically control Mario as always. But he feels so good. You can you can run like this, jump, do a dive, all that stuff. However, with Cappy, you can actually do new things, such as being able to bounce off of him. And new to this game, you can capture things such as this post right here, or cone or whatever it is. Basically, you can capture many things in this game. Basically, have their abilities, such as this thing, you can flick it around. You can even put a hat on this dude, for example, and use this RC car for a lot of things. And speaking of which, the mini games. There are so many mini games in here. 
We have the jump rope challenge, the, the beach volleyball challenge, the RC car thing, which I'm doing right now, and Koopa races as well, which are pretty inventive mini games. I mean, okay, maybe they're not inventive, but eh, they're still cool. And should I mention that Luigi's Balloon World is coming out soon? That's going to be pretty sick. Basically, in this game, also, like I said before, in order to progress in the game, you need to collect power moves. Unlike Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and the Galaxy games, instead of collecting around 120, you actually collect, you can actually collect, well, basically 999 power moons from what I'm aware. This can be done like right here where some of them, some of the power moons will be out in the open. Some of them will actually be in more well hidden spots. Some of them will require you to do something like a time challenge, which are what these scarecrow things are for. And you can also buy power moons at the shops as well. And I haven't even mentioned the shops yet. Let's go. Basically, in this game, this is the first Mario game ever to actually use coins to buy stuff instead of extra lives. Basically, you can talk to one of these dudes, and you can buy some extra health, a power moon, and you can buy a bunch of clothes. In this game, you can actually change your clothes. So you, some of them referencing other Mario games, such as the Mario Maker outfit, um, the Mario Paint outfit, and Mario 64 outfit. And there's also regional coins as well that can be used to buy region exclusive items such as the Pauline statue and the golf outfit. Honestly, they really need to get this into more Mario games. I feel like this would be so cool considering how much there is to do. I mean, capture you can pretty much capture a lot of things in this game. There's a lot of power moves collect, and there's a lot of costumes. And I should also mention that more costumes are though on the way as well. Ultimately, gameplay-wise, there is it is amazing. Controls. Control-wise, this game really is good. It feels a lot better than almost all the games before it. It doesn't feel very slippery like Super Mario 64. Basically, I'm playing right now with a pro controller. You, using the L stick will move Mario around just like that. A and B can both jump. X and Y can throw Cappy. Pressing down on the D-pad will allow you to go into snapshot mode, which is another mode in the game that you can use. But I'll get into more of that later on. You can also hold down right on the D-pad so you can scan Amiibo to unlock something special in the game such as outfits, or a power moon location. Pre pressing L and R can both basically reset the camera, kind of like Splatoon 2. Pressing the L and R buttons will allow you to basically um, reset the camera. L, or wait. ZL and ZR, my bad. Basically will allow you to do, basically crouch while you're on the ground. However, if you're in the air, you do a ground pound. And then there's also some other moves you can do as well, such as jumping in the air, basically pressing, jumping in the air, throwing Cappy, and then pressing both of the shoulder buttons, the ZL and ZR buttons, will actually, will allow you to do a dive. There are some other actions you can do in the game as well, like a lot of them. Also, I should mention the 2D sections as well. Basically, in the 2D sections, the way to move around is, well, basically by pushing left or right on the control stick, pressing A or B to jump, and pressing Y to actually dash. I'll also discuss the other, the 2D sections later on in the video. However, if you want to see all of the actions you can really do in the game, I highly recommend checking out the action guide in, in the game. But honestly, the controls in this game feel really freaking good. Modes. 
Like I've said before in this video, there are many ways you can play this game. Basically different gameplays. Or, that, wait. Basically, you can play normally like this, where you, it's basically 3D Mario. However, like before, you can also turn, go into 2D sections as well, to basically play the game in the style of Super Mario Brothers. And you can also do some other things, including riding Jaxi, riding a motorcycle, doing the RC car challenge, and many more things. And every time you capture one of these guys, right now I haven't have captured an uproot, you can play the game differently because you can't really do that much. Right now, all you can really do is move around and stretch your legs to go up really high. So basically, the ways to play the game is pretty much endless. And like I've also said before, there are also other challenges like the, ro the jump rope challenge and beach volleyball challenge. And the Koopa race challenge things, which really doesn't have anything to do with that. So we're going to move on from that stuff. Ultimately, this game has a lot of cool things. Another mode that's in this game is Snapshot Mode. Once again, by pressing down on the D-pad, you can get into Snapshot Mode. Basically, this basically allows you to take pictures by freezing time. Basically, you can move the camera around. You can move, you can move the camera like that. You can press A to zoom out, press X to zoom in on certain things. And pressing the left and right on the D-pad, you can actually change the filter. So you can make it look like any, like an NES graphics, Game Boy graphics, SNES graphics, or just other filters as well, like sepia tones and stuff like that. Though I do doubt if anyone's really going to use this, it's still really cool that Nintendo included it. Also, just as, as another bonus that Nintendo included, it, you could also press the um, ZL and ZR buttons to actually change the position and tilt the photo, so that way you can actually use it as a wallpaper for your computer or for your iPhone or whatever phone you own. I know no one's probably going to use this, I mean some people might, but hell, it's so cool that Nintendo included such a thing. It's cool. Ultimately, there are so many ways to play this game, and it's so remarkable. Kingdoms. One of the big things in, in any 3D Mario game for that matter are the environments you're in. Like the bomb battlefields in Super Mario 64 and Rico Harbor in Super Mario Sunshine. Where while Super Mario Odyssey doesn't have as many worlds as the, the previous games, I feel that the kingdoms in this game are so much bigger. Now, there are a few exceptions out there, such as the Cascade Kingdom and a few other kingdoms like the Lost Kingdom, but I still feel like this game kingdoms are still a lot bigger than the kingdoms from the previous games and it feels like there's more to do I think that might be one of the biggest things now some of the kingdom sizes can be a little bit huge like sand kingdom but hell it means more to explore so more doors to explore basically So, and then there's also the fact of the style of the worlds. While the worlds aren't the most original for Mario games, they did change it up a little bit, such as the such as normal grass world being mixed in with fossils, the jungle world being mixed in with machinery, and the and the final fire level actually being based off of a Japanese temple. It really feels so it's so cool. Honestly, honestly, while I do kind of wish there were a few more kingdoms, I kind of wish there were a few DLC kingdoms. Hell, at least we have good kingdoms t to begin with. And as for the kingdoms in the game, while there are a few of them, like the Cloud Kingdom and the Ruin Kingdom, that are just boss arenas, at least they still look cool, and there is some stuff you can do there. 
ultimately the kingdoms in this game are amazing. Final thoughts. Honestly, this has got to be one of the best Mario games I've ever played. While I will admit the difficulty should have been cranked up a little bit more, as the darker side is a little is easier than Champions Road, I still feel like this game, at least it's somewhat good difficulty-wise, and the fan service for this game is just, like, it's so well done. Like, right now I'm actually playing as the Mario 64 Mario. There's a lot of fan service in this game. And I love it. While I didn't grow up with Super Mario 64, I still feel it's so cool that Nintendo will actually reference their previous games. I feel it's a really cool thing. I feel that the gameplay is just amazing. The story could have been better, but I still love it a lot. There's so many cool ways to play the game. The controls feel 100% solid. And oh my god, I could gush about this game more and more, but... I'm not gonna go too um, and also the music in this game is pretty good too while there isn't as much music I still feel that eh, there are really good song soundtracks like the Cascade Kingdom song and Jump Up Superstar Some of the best things about the game So to finally give this game a rating Between one being the worst and seven being the best I'd give this game an instant six. I would say, actually screw that, seven. This game is amazing. Anyone with a Nintendo Switch should buy this game. And if you don't own a Nintendo Switch, well, this might be, might be the reason why you should get one. It's so much fun. The two player is also really good. Well, it's not the best thing in the world. It's so cool. So personally, I would recommend any of you guys to play this game. Like, seriously, it's a really good game. So anyways, I think that's it for the review video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to check out the end card where I actually made a Super Mario Odyssey playthrough. Um, I really hope you guys will enjoy the playthrough. I, it's... It's probably the fun. It's probably funny. I don't know. I recorded that a while back. I highly recommend checking that out. And I also made um, a raging video of Super Meat Boy. I also recommend checking that out as well because that's pretty funny. I basically go completely bananas. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a good day. This game is so good.